So here's a quick exercise for you guys who want to be doing this in the key of C. Now it sounds a little bit difficult, but it's actually not. It's a very simple concept. It's a four finger concept actually. So grab your bass, let's go. What's going on everybody? I'm Derek Bennett. If you're new to this channel, we talk about everything bass related and I'm here to help you skyrocket your bass playing to that next level. So if that's you and you're interested in that, consider subscribing and pressing that icon, that bell icon thingy. You see it. Okay, so let's get right to it. We're in the key of C starting on the fifth note, the G, but the lower G of that scale. We're starting on that G on the third fret. So the concept is very simple. We're starting off with a triad. So G, B, D, do da da. We're playing the fifth note, seventh note, second note, right? So five, seven, two, seven, one. Da, da. It's almost the same exact thing when you're skipping that string or when you're starting on the A string again. So we have triad, G major triad. Go back down to the seventh note of that scale, B, B, C, triad again, C major triad. Da, da. Okay, so. The first time is a triad, G major triad. The second time is actually a C major seven arpeggio because the last note on top of that is a B. So we're playing a, a B major, a C major seven arpeggio. So we got and then we're back to the root note or to the tonic. So the one, the octave of that, right? So we have tri uh, triad, major triad, seventh note, C major seven arpeggio, and then end it off on that one, right? Then we come back down, the C major triad, backwards. So G, E, C. It's just a combination of triads and arpeggios <laughs> just kind of put together, you know. Um, so. It just sounds really good melodically too. And if you guys hear in the beginning or heard in the beginning, I actually use that same exact thing. I play the exact same thing. So that's why I like implementing different exercises that you can realistically use and sound good melodically as well. So do and that's the whole entire lick. So you group those together, and that's what I like to do as well too, guys. When you're learning a lick or you're learning an exercise or a riff, it doesn't even matter. This is not technically a riff at the time, it was an exercise, uh, so we can just call it that for now. So I was grouping these notes so I can remember them a little bit more, a little bit easier. Triad, arpeggio, triad backwards. You get it? Okay, so let's go through the notes slowly. G, B, D, B, C, E, G, B, C, G, E, C. If you want to call those numbers out, it'll be five, seven, two, seven, one, three, five, seven, one, five, three, one. Oh, that's tough to remember, <laughs> but you get the idea. Those are the, those are the scale degrees of this particular exercise. So. That's the whole entire thing. So make sure you know it's coming out clean, clear, and precise when you're practicing this. So I have a link to the PDF transcription along with the tab in the info below so you guys can check that out. So another thing that I like to do with this exercise is modulate it. You get the idea, right? So just modulate that. It'll just help you or help that repetition along with getting used to the nets, the frets getting narrower as you come down the fretboard. Very simple exercise. You can use that in a riff or in a lick anywhere. Uh, check it out. Uh, make sure you're also coming on clean, clear, and precise, like I said before. Uh, check out the links below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.